Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all VISA stakeholders from all over the world who have joined us to celebrate the final week of the VISA Forum 2022. We had 11 high-level policy sessions during the WISIS Forum's final week, uh, where more than 150 high-levels joined us, more than 40 ministers. We had a very interesting and engaging dialogue with recommendations. And I have here with me today high-level track facilitators who facilitated these sessions. So I'd like to welcome uh, Paul, who moderated one of the sessions. And he had a very interesting discussion. And some of the key issues that were highlighted, of course, were, was bridging the digital divide, ICT infrastructure, uh, cybersecurity, and so on and so forth. So Paul, could you highlight some of the key recommendations that came out of your session? Yeah, sure. Thank you. For the question. So I moderated uh, session 11, which was um, concerned with the ethics in ICT and uh, the cultural uh, content created on the internet and also gender mainstreaming. And most of the panelists agreed that currently the ICTs and the internet are not very welcoming for local content. And there needs to be a strong focus on local content creators who actually create in their own languages content for their own people. Um, we need more tools to support translations and uh, the creation of local content and especially also uh, more and better education um, for these local content creators to, to raise the digital literacy on this planet. In terms of ethics, um, it was widely discussed that currently the internet got more and more centralized and we, we have most of current technologies and future technology in the hands of just a few. So there should be a strong focus on decentralizing again the internet to give back the power to the people who actually use it so they can control their own privacy, their own data, and also um, create this local content which is needed because we need also to empower the users to be the content creators they can be. And of course, gender mainstreaming was also a very big topic, um, especially during the pandemic. Um, the, the, first, the first evidence shows that the harassment against women online actually exponentially grew due to the pandemic, and it has severe implications for women online. We need safe spaces for women to participate online, create the content we need also from their side. And we also need to make the um, predators accountable, so we need to find the, the um, violence and the crimes they commit to actually um, prosecute them. And last, we also had a vivid discussion about the currently landscape of the media online. Um, currently, journalists are on and offline under attack. There is a lot of miscommunication and misinformation online and it's a big challenge for all governments and organizations on this planet to actually manage the information and actually ensure that the quality of, of, of the news media outlets is ensured. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, sounds like a very interesting dialogue. Uh, we are working with UNESCO on uh, uh, highlighting the role of ICTs in the decade of indigenous languages. So we had a special track this year and uh, a hackathon, uh, which uh, in involved a lot of innovation from people all over the world. And of course, local content creation. The uh, virtual sessions have allowed us to uh, get people to do their um, virtual workshops in local languages. So that has been uh, very, very useful uh, for the WISIS Forum as well. So thank you so much, Paul. I'd like to move on now to Moira from IEEE. And uh, Moira also had a very in interesting discussion uh, where uh, there were some uh, really nice case studies which were highlighted, some of the challenges, some emerging trends were expressed by the high levels who were present in the session. Moira, can you share some of your impressions from the session. Yes, thanks, Katanjali. And yeah, we did have a really interesting session. We had 11 high-level speakers. So it was a, a very dynamic session that had a lot of different um, perspectives. So the session was session number five called ICTs, ICT Applications and Services. And of course, 
one of the key points is that ICTs really are a key enabler uh, for all other uh, sectors and a lot of vital services that we depend on in our daily lives, such as education, healthcare, uh, public services, and more. And so ICTs have been a fundamental lifeline for people during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and with that, uh, we heard you know, from some countries that their uh, internet traffic increased by 50% during the pandemic and uh, that they were able to manage that. But uh, so this is really a critical foundation for our societies going forward. Um, some of the challenges though that were raised are also um, the continued digital divide. Uh, and while um, countries highlighted the progress they've made in connecting the unconnected, there still is a lot of work to be done in that space. Um, as well as uh, digital literacy education, the end users of these services, um, not all have the digital literacy skills that are necessary to be able to navigate and take advantage of, of the ICTs. Um, so that's a big initiative for a lot of countries. Additionally, uh, the gender gap was mentioned a number of times and uh, several of the countries highlighted key programs that they have to uh, increase the participation of girls and women in STEM, to have mentoring programs, uh, to, to really help also um, women uh, enter into the, the technology sector. Uh, professionally speaking and to help diversify. So there are a lot of innovative and active programs um, to, to help address that. Um, the governments talked about how uh, ICT strategies, e-government strategies um, were key uh, governmental priorities and were really helping in um, having a unified plan. Uh, many governments are working with private sector to have make the services available and in that sense um, they they serve as a, a facilitator and try to bring together all the key stakeholders to um, you know facilitate the ICT applications and infrastructures for their societies so I think overall um, you know there was really a vision laid out for how uh, ICTs continue to help society be resilient uh, and to address some of the challenges that still remain. And we look forward to continued progress in that. Uh, thank you, Moira. A uh, really interesting discussion uh, where um, I think some crucial things were highlighted, like digital skills. Um, this was also highlighted during the uh, ministerial roundtable that we had yesterday, that uh, there has to be uh, a lot of replication of training, uh, capacity building uh, for all stakeholders to be included in this uh, digital revolution. So thank you so much, Moira. Uh, we move on to uh, Kevin. Uh, Kevin also won a WISIS uh, prize yesterday, so congratulations, Kevin. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And he uh, moderated a session uh, on ac which actually covered issues around Action Line C6, uh, enabling environment, a very important one uh, for a safe, robust, uh, and inclusive uh, information and knowledge societies to function. So, Kevin, what were your uh, main observations? Well, we had a very interesting uh, panel with uh, eight panelists from eight different countries. We had uh, two ministers who were uh, contributing and, and, and five from reg uh, four from uh, regulatory bodies and uh, private sector, global private sector representative and, and another from a, a, a business association, the International Chamber of Commerce. So very interesting different perspectives on the issue of enabling environment. <clears throat> It was a new area for me. I was a learner there as much as a facilitator. Uh, what I heard uh, was that uh, you know, a big challenge for an enabling environment is, of course, connectivity. And connectivity has multiple dimensions. There's, of course, the infrastructure. Um, uh, additionally, though, there's uh, the access and making sure that all people have access to the infrastructure they need and the devices they need. And thirdly is use, uh, accessibility without useful tools, content is not very helpful, so it has to be value adding um, uh, services that are available so that people use, make, make use of the connectivity once they have it. 
Uh, we heard about the importance of uh, multi-stakeholder partnerships. It's not one, it's not the government alone, it's not any one sector alone. It needs to include civil society, private sector, and government working together on a framework uh, that they agree to together. Regulation is not a bad word uh, in this case. In fact, a strong regulatory environment is important, but it needs to be transparent, it needs to be predictable and stable. I uh, heard about the importance of um, investing in, uh, in uh, digital literacy and making sure that the education is there for people to be able to use the systems that are available. Uh, we also heard um, <clears throat> about the importance of, uh, or the opportunities governments have for incentivizing uh, private sector uh, investment in uh, infrastructure. A uh, good example from Malaysia, where a licensing condition uh, for the telecoms was to put money in a fund to allow a service to be extended to commercially non-viable areas. Uh, we heard about e-government uh, platforms uh, that countries are introducing in Mongolia uh, and others talked about the, e the, the platforms and that raised the importance for, to, for that to be enabled as a, as a viable system. It emphasizes the importance of uh, extending uh, access to everybody, um, making sure that rural areas are well served and that and the groups that are traditionally less able to access are, are given more attention. Women, people with disabilities, people in rural areas, the elderly and youth and so forth. So those are some of the themes that came across during this session. Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, we would now like to move on to uh, Ms. Mailing, who moderated the first high-level policy session. Mailin, welcome. And can you please share some of the impressions you had of the session, some of the challenges and opportunities that were expressed? Over to you. Thank you, Gitanjali. Um, first of all, I'd like to say it was a surprise. Because bridging the digital divide, I thought, okay, these are telco regulators and ministers. Um, what are they going to talk about? They'd be talking about access. But no, it was so wonderful. They talked about infrastructure, funding mechanisms. They talked about multi-generations. They talked about multiple stakeholders. This is a far richer interpretation of bridging the digital divide than I ever expected. But then it becomes confusing and complex because the range of initiatives spans such a broad area. It made me think, how can the ITU, how can the uh, WISIS action lines actually set up so that we can help other countries learn from all of these different initiatives because they can't just listen to 60 minutes and kind of work out what to do. So it really triggered some thinking on my part. What's the next step to take these wonderful advances by passionate, committed people to actually be repurposed and recycled for other countries to bridge the digital divide. Thank you so much, Melin. So on that note, uh, we would like to end this interview highlighting the fact that we heard many recommendations. Now it's time for action. So we would like to form uh, a or multi-stakeholder WISIS uh, special initiatives which take forward these, like the WISIS gender trendsetters, the ICTs and older persons initiatives, the multi-stakeholder alliance on ICTs and older persons, and so on and so forth. So please keep, uh, please be connected, and please work with us all year long to make sure that the WISIS action lines help achieve the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you.